Well, we are back and welcome to another episode of Off the Leash, brought to you by the Racing Post in association with Premier Greyhound Racing. Episode five, the action is once again red hot. And the company we keep is top class again, because Tony Bullen from the Racing Post joins us. Tony, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, Dave. It's, um, again, a lot's going on and it's getting more and more competitive racing. I mean, some cracking racing at Monmore the other day. And I mean, it's still as wide open as it was at the start. Yeah, we'll get to more of the stars of the future on show at Newcastle as well. But do, of course, remember to subscribe, comment below, let us know what you fancy, and like our videos as well on the Racing Post YouTube channel. Right, we will get to uh, the action, but first and foremost, uh, another week and another shed load of winners, Tony. Your nap doing the business, uh, I thought was surprisingly a big price as well, Boba Rambo, 15 to 8, but very professional. Yeah, I did say that the draw would probably help with the price, Dave. I'd, like, Obviously, you'd feel a few would take him on. If he'd have been drawn red, I wouldn't have entertained him. He would have probably been odds on. But being drawn in four, I said he's big enough and strong enough to bully his way around the first two bends. And once he did, he sustained the gallop. Right, we'll get to the winter derby. Up first, the £12,500 Arc Northern Puppy Derby final. One of the big puppy competitions of the year. Semi-finals will be live on Sky Sports Racing behind the red button on Premier Greyhound Racing Thursday night up at Newcastle. So there were six first round heats last week. We're going to have a look at the fastest heat winner, and that was Velvet Violet for Phil Barlow. Um, in trap two here, 2868, Ballymac Zari in four, and Walter Mill Amara in trap one, your qualifiers here. Off the front, I really rate um, the bitch in four here. I think Kevin Hutton, the trainer, does as well. Tony thinks he's a a stayer in the making. So the fact that four turned so handy, a really good effort from the winner. Yeah, it was. And the fact that the winner was still going strong at the pickup day, Velvet Violet, obviously could be still improving following seasonal rest. I mean, Connections would have been delighted with that first competitive start of the year. And if she can continue to show that early pace, I mean, she's got an excellent chance of booking her place in the final drawn in red. Interesting with this event, very top heavy with bitches. This is quite unusual for a, um, a competition. I did notice there's a lot of bitches. I think there's nine bitches remaining, but yeah, Velvet Violet, you'd expect there should be more to come. Yeah, 28 68, the effort there from the winner. Fastest of the heat winners. Very impressive as well. Only 16 now remain, though. Unfortunately, you've had a couple of notable non runners during the week. A Velvet Hurricane, who's a kennel mate of Velvet Violet, is out, as is. Greenwell Avet as well. So those two are out. The traps will be vacant and we'll spin through the trap draw now. Um, we'll take in the first semi-final then, which will be the 7.32 on Thursday night up at Newcastle. Uh, we've just seen Velvet Violet. Um, got the red jacket here. Tony, how do you see this one? Yeah, she's going to probably be a worthy favourite, but I like Clona Curley here, Dave. If you go back, um, the Aero Secundi in a competition at Cork, which was a very good competition back in October, I thought that was a satisfactory effort. It has to come from off the speed, but I think can show a little bit more urgency at the boxes. Will it naturally improve for a further look round Newcastle? And I was with Clona Curley in this particular semi. Two votes for Clona Curley there because I'm going to be with the Black Jacket runner in the first semi final as well. Right, semi final two then, which will be the 7.49 on Thursday. Remember, first two go through to next week's. £12,500 final. Uh, I'm going to now my colours to the mile straight off the bat here. Droopy's. Eunice, uh, very impressive last week. Another good draw, obviously, with two now being vacant. Uh, what sort of price do you think the top will be, Tony? And who's your pick? Yeah, I was with top, even with Greenwell over in there, just on the basis that she was drawn on the inside. I think she'll be short. I think she'll be probably a shade of odds on, um, in, in fairness, Droopy's Eunice. And, I mean, Bally Maxari, as you touched on, stayed on OK in the first round. But I just think Maxine Locks bitch really going the right way, sub-24 seconds at Romford, and has proven that she's equally affected over a stiffer four bends. Yeah, and as I mentioned in last week's show, look out for Maxine Lott this year, because she's got a nice kennel of dogs uh, to go to war with. So on her travels, uh, look out for the Romford trainer there. Right, we move on to the third semi-final then, which will be the 8.09. Again, we're going to see a vacant box here, trap two. Um, where are you at, Tony, with this one? I think it's uh, probably quite competitive. Yeah, I like six here. I think Copicella, who's probably going to be my outright selection. I thought out the three semis, Copicella's probably fared the best in the draw on both aspects. I mean, now Velvet Hurricane's out. 
I, I like the way that she stuck to the task in the first round. Again, should naturally improve for a further look round. And I think Kevin Hutton's bitch can just bide her time out wide, prove too strong. Two votes for the stripes there. Let's have a look at the, the outright book then. As I mentioned, uh, a couple of notable non-runners. And the Greenwell of Vet Dog was, I think, second in or contesting favouritism. So a little bit of a market shake-up. Um, I'll put up Droopy's Eunice um, at 7-1 to one price-wise in the, the racing post. I'm really surprised that there's still 5-1 to one available. Tony, are you? Yeah, considering, obviously, the way the, 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 the couple of the bigger names have, have now come out. So, I mean, sometimes... Bookmakers ain't as quick to react with, with non-runners nowadays. They, 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 their finger's not necessarily on the pulse, but if you can snap all the value, it does seem a big price. And if you were to have a play right now, who's it going to be? Copy seller for me. I, I, I think that she can book a, a ticket in the final. Uh, I think around eight to one. Might even be an each way still. Not as exciting for me. I'm just going to go Droopy Junis, five to one, still too big. Qualifiers, be a short price in the final if the draw works out nice. I think we can go from the front. Good luck to everyone involved there. And they are the stars of the future, of course, on show in the Northern Puppy Derby final. Now then, the good stuff, right? This is absolutely sensational. It was sensational last week, and it's going to be brilliant this week as well, because 36 has become 18. Uh, we're going to have a look now at the £10,000 Labrooks Winter Derby at Monmore, right? And we're going to start with Heat number two and it's a good place to start because this is the dog that tony told you was the nap of the round boggle rambo in trap four 28 58 get up me boy in five and bets his bullet in two of the qualifiers he needed to be snappy from the boxes to get across tony but he was yeah and that's how he's only going to win his race whether he's drawn one two three four five or six dave needed a smash break got the break edged across i thought the track was a little bit holding probably quite holding for me particularly on the inside so I think the dogs that ran on the inside give them an extra star because I, I did think the track was probably a little bit more holding on the rails, but he done it well. He wasn't even flashy on the clock, but when a track's holding like that, dogs are not going to be posting track record times. And when you say that, what you're implying is that the dogs around the outside had a better track to run on, right? I believe so, yeah. I mean, obviously the results, people would say, oh, well, look at the inside, dogs, they've done well, but they're class dogs. It wasn't I'm not talking a massive bias, but it was holding sufficiently to my eyes. OK, right. We'll move on then to a ground who did the business around the outside. And another one that you flagged up last week, Tony, not only to win his heat, but also outright as well. And we'll come on to that after with the digested the semi-final draw. But Skywalker Capella here, a ground who broke my heart because I backed Killer Detail and trapped through. Did qualify back in third. Blue Jig Baron was your other qualifier in trap five but he's he's game this dog and and ted's you know getting a tune out of him i think he's a big player yeah he, he, he placed him well before this event ted he'd given him a few sort of straightforward assignments and he'd come into this event with a bit of confidence under his belt he looked after himself out wide which he needed to do and he gutsed it out he ground it out again time wasn't anything spectacular but you're in the next round it doesn't times are irrelevant yeah and we as we touched on last week you know the seeded dogs not just the wide dogs but seeded dogs in general thin on the ground um so he's going to have plenty of racing from out wide yeah exactly that there i think there was only four four wides in, in total so if your wides get through you're going to get your draw so um that was my theory but to be truthful you're going to probably need a bit of help on what we have seen from particularly raps this superstar litter of rab and liz McNair. Well, we're going to move on to that now. This was uh, the delayed uh, heat number four. It was an issue with the boxes, which was eventually resolved. Uh, and we were waiting in anticipation for the clash of superstars here. Because Queen Jolly, she was the winner in trap one, 28-36. Could have had a shadow, who just caught the eye once again in defeat in trap two. And Churchfield Sid, the original Antipose favourite, out wide in trap six. Um, she showed all of her classes. She made full use of the inside. She did it well at the boxes, and we know she's top class, and she showed it, Tony. Yeah, this was a race, Dave, that would have graced the final itself. I mean, you've got the defending champ, Kulavani Shadow. I mean, he's, a, he's, a, he's an enigma, Kulavani Shadow, but he's a joy to watch. I mean, you just never know what you're going to get with him when them boxes open, but the pace that he's got, even when he misses the break, the second or third pace is phenomenal. But Queen Joni, she's getting all the right notes out of her. I mean, Swindon Produce Stakes won the British Bread Derby at Sheffield. She's just an exceptional bitch, and 
I mean, she threw down a serious marker here, in my opinion, the track holding on the inside. Yeah, and I know he got beat, and I know he was bad at the boxes, but for me, like an example of why Kulavani Shadow is probably the fastest dog in training because he'd done it all wrong at the boxes, but he was still competitive and looking for race room into the third turn. So if the dog ever smashes out, I honestly don't think there's a dog that can beat him. No, it's scary, the pace that the dog's got. I mean, that's that's the problem with him. The boxes, he's just... He's just, um, as I say, an, an enigma. He's he's the type of dog that could go close to breaking the clock or running like a, a, an A6 dog when he misses the break and gets all tangled up. But the pace of him, the fact that he remains in the event, Dave, is the reason for the others to worry. Yeah, he's a star for sure. Right, we move on then to uh, the now anti-post favourite, King Capaldi, who did the business from track four in heat five. 28.42 with the winning time. Look out for Droopy Zeddy in trap six and Lynx Maverick in trap two here. What did you make of the run of, of Lynx Maverick first, Tony? Yeah, I think he needed the run. You could He looked like a dog that, that, that's going to come on a bundle for the run, but he's running a, another a star from Liz and Rabbit near Kennel King Capaldi. He's a well-balanced dog. As I say, he prefers the inside, but when you can come away like he did in on this occasion, he was always going to take the beating. Droopy Zeddy ran well. I think the going certainly helped Droopy Zeddy. And Lynx Maverick just scrambled through, held on to third. And again, the fact that he's in the competition is cause for the others to be concerned. Yeah, I did think Drew said he ran well there. And, you know, King Capaldi is just exceptional. I think he's the dog that's desperate for the inside, um, which we'll get on to make the, the semi final draw interesting. But he's, he's a class act. King Capaldi is the ground that we flagged up last week as the, the market mover, the notable market mover for this year's Derby. He's well regarded by connections uh, and he showed exactly why in the first round there right we will move on then because 18 now remain 36 the field is halved and first two will go through in each of the three semi-finals on saturday up first semi-final one which will be the 1202 here labrick's first out of the boxes with prices um i was a bit surprised that they went lynx maverick fab here seven or four lynx maverick on the inside over Churchfield Sid um, in six at two to one, who I'm very much going to be with here. Um, how did you think the market would shape for this race, Tony? Yeah, I, I was a bit surprised that he was sent off like seven. He, they went seven to four. I am with Lynx Maverick. I do think he'll come on a bomb for the run. And I think the inside draw might see him trap in his best fashion and, and, and nip around the first two bends in front. Um, obviously, he, he's yet to hit the heights of last year, but... He's shown enough in defeat there last weekend. Tom would know. That, like What I did notice, he was 32-3 when he went to Scales last weekend, compared to 31-7, 30.6. So I think he'll trim him down a bit. He'll go to the Scales a little bit lighter. You'll see a different dog. There you go. Big note for Lynx Maverick there. Could have had his shadow. Uh, in trap four, going to be a big player as well. But yeah, I'm very keen on Church. We'll see. I think he can display from the boxes. And if Lynx Maverick doesn't flash out, you know, things could get tight on the inside and Churchwood City will just get a run out wide. Uh, we'll move on then to semi-final two, which will be the 12.32 on Saturday. Remember, on Sky Sports Racing, behind the red button, brought to you by Premier Greyhound Racing. Um, King Sydney, uh, another one, another star of, of Liz and Rag McNair. 13-8 uh, favourite with the sponsors on the inside here. What are your thoughts, Tony? Yeah, that was a that was probably a career best effort from King Sydney. He's, he's more lightly raced than a few of his um, progeny. Um, I thought it was a good run, but I, I didn't see any reason to desert Bogger Rambo, Dave. I think I know he's got the draw in the middle, but I think he can bang across, lead out the second bend, and say, "Catch me if you can." He's a, he's a, he's clearly a winner when he does front off. And again, I mean, he went to scales a lot heavier than he's been of late. So whether Tom thought, well, I need to get him out, put a bit of weight on his back, he needed a smash break from four, and he'd certainly got that. But King Sydney was very impressive. I mean, blew away Aero Secundi. He was impressive off the speed. Um, I thought Droopy Zeddy run well. Uh, he won a trial state a couple of weeks ago from Trap 5, did the business. We know Bogger Rambo is going to edge inside. So I'm going to take a chance with Trap 5 there. Hopefully what will be... A bit of a price, I think five to one on the earliest. Right, the third and final semi-final, which is the the 102, and without a doubt, I think this is the, the race of the round. You know, the first semi-final is decent, but all eyes on the inside here at uh, two minutes past one on Saturday because it will be 
Queen Johnny versus King Capaldi on the inside. And Labricks couldn't split them. A bottle of glue, two to one joint favourites on the inside. I think King Capaldi will just smash and get across. He'll need to. Uh, he's a dog that wants the inside. How do you see it, Tony? It'd be very interesting. That they was due to meet in the British Bread Derby final at Sheffield and King Capaldi was a, was a non-runner and Queen Joanie said thank you very much and took full advantage. Now, he, he, he could pin her to the inside, King Capaldi, and the, the, the team tactics might go out the window. I'm hoping that Queen Joanie can just be brave and show that yard, trap level, nip round the bend. But if it did cut up very scrappy, you'd have to throw in the heavyweight that he's Burj Khalifa. Um, he's going to get a solo out wide. He's strong as an ox, runner up in the eclipse. Aero Secundi needs to win the early battle. He's not going to be coming from off the pace. Yeah, I mean, it is a race in which, you know, the layers could just take a stance here and think, you know what, we'll try and get the front two beat because they're drawn around the wrong way. And you make a good point about Burj Khalifa, you know, a real powerhouse. He runs the bends well. He's strong over the full race. He may be the one to, to chuck in full casts. And try cast. Right, let's have a look at the, the outright book then, uh, which still, unsurprisingly, and it tells you just how good this event is, uh, the market is still wide open. £10,000 up for grabs in next week's final. First two will go through from the semis. And we're 7-2 to two the field, King Capaldi, we've just seen. Uh, Lynx Maverick in at five, along with Churchwood, Sid, Queen Johnny at six. 12-1 uh, to one bar. Now, you've put up. Skywalker Pele last week, 16 to 1. Make up, you know, there's not a lot of wides in. He did it well in the first round. He's still a massive price. Would you would you double dip? Would you go in again? What, how'd you play? No, I th- I, again, I'd probably stick. And I didn't feel that there was anything that you could re go, reinvest with because it's still so wide open, Dave. We said it was speed heavy, this competition. My selection, Skywalker Pele, is going to need a little bit of help up front if he's going to land the spoils. But Nothing's ever set in stone in this sport. And if he can just qualify, you only need to win the one race. So I'd, I'd stick, but obviously not as confident. OK, well, I'm quite I'm very sweet on Churchill Sid, and I'm surprised that he's because I'm so strong on him to win his semi-final, which we'll get on to. Um, I, I'm drawn to him at fives because I think if he wins on, on Saturday, it's obviously not going to be fives, but... If he does it in the fashion that he's capable of, you know, he's probably going to be favourite. Because if he gets six, you know, regardless of what's on his inside, he puts a 28 dead up on the board uh, this week. So at five to one, I'm going to chuck in uh, Churchfield City because I think he's a, a big player. I think he'll win on Saturday. And then you're sitting on five to one for next week's final in a draw that might well suit him with a little bit of crowding on the inside. Um, right. We do always encourage you guys to get in touch with us. The dogs are the stars, but we love the interaction with. Uh, everyone sitting at home on your way to work whatever you're doing however you're consuming off the leash do get in touch with us like comment and subscribe uh, and we will try and eventually get through all your messages but one here um, from Pete Stevens which came in yesterday um, which what did that Tony make of Dave's Monday column in the Racing Post obviously you are the person that prices up all the opens uh, in the Racing Post and I touched on sort of the sustainability of the sport at the moment and just purely the crazy number of open races yes we've got some brilliant action this week but outside of it you know some races are questionable whether they merit being an open race in my opinion a hundred percent i feel like i'm a graded correspondent dave nowadays and um, rather than an open race um correspondent it's just laughable laughable really but the thing is there's no no one reveals why they're doing it like you you don't get no answers from any parties. Like you, you just like them to say, well, we're putting these on because of this, that, and other. The thing that annoys me a little bit with the GBGB, Toaster needed to obviously trainers are changing tracks left, right, and centre nowadays. So I can understand them making opens up to get the dogs on the card quicker without having to trial. But call them GORs, grading on races. Don't be open races. It's just ridiculous because they still carry points. So. It's just sort of shoot themselves in the foot type of thing, really. But again, the GBGB are the regulator, but it's all like secret service all the time. You don't really get any answers. You initially sort of do your own digging and that, and even then you're scratching your head. You're a busy boy at the moment, mate. I know that much. An unprecedented number of open races at the moment, right? Oh, massive. I mean, I think there was uh, 115 last week, over 450-odd in Jan. I mean, just look at this weekend, for example. I mean, like Central Park, 
they've got opens. It's full of their own dogs. Like they're they're not opens. Like it's just it's just so poor. And the thing is, back in the day, to win an open race, when you're on the podium getting your little trophy or whatever, you felt proud to win an open. Now you might as well sort of go go and get a ticket off the back of a cornflake box and say, oh, I've won an open. It's just I just think it degrades the sport a little bit, Dave, really. But there's no rhyme or reason why they're doing it. There should be an announcement like we're doing this because we, but there's not. Yeah, certainly the, a, a feel across the board. I think everyone in the industry just sees the dilution of the top end of the sport, as you say. You know, the open racing meant to be the, the sort of the cream of the crop. You know, this is the best in action. And we are across a number of tracks just seeing graded dogs take on graded dogs. Uh, maybe the odd outside trainer just because you know tracks are struggling for numbers and, and trying to put cards together that one will rumble on no doubt and i'm sure you will still be busy uh in the coming weeks and months tony um right then let's get down to business and let's have a look at this week's best bets there now you've been in fantastic form tony you give us bob rambo last week and we've had got finney blaze twice you're on fire you are a man in form Talk to me, where are we this week with this week's nap? You stick with Bogger Rambo, Dave. I think he will trap again, get across. Obviously, King Sydney turns a clean second. It's race on, but I, I like Bogger Rambo. He's a winning dog when he gets off the front. I think he can get off the front, lead the inside. Droop his head, he's a big player when he comes away on level terms. And Skywall Capella, he, he could have a good makeup out wide. But at the prices, I'll take the chance with Bogger Rambo ping get across and hopefully stay out in front well, if it's not broke don't fix it so tony going with bogger rambo there my best bet of the weekend is going to be churchfield sid the dog that was originally anti-post favorite for the labrick's winter derby he's got his draw i thought he run well in defeat i think he can explode from the boxes and make all the running he goes in semi-final number one on saturday at Monmore. Remember, three semi finals. First two will go through to next week's £10,000 Labrooks Winter Derby. Tony's nap, Bob Rambo. My nap is going to be Churchfield Sid. And this has been Off the Leash. Do remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And more importantly, gamble responsibly. We'll see you next time.